to AYF in worship. Friends, it's a privilege for all of us to be involved in this great thing in Uganda and the world over. Psalm 124 says, if the Lord had, been, had not been on our side, let Israel say, let AYF say, let you say, if the Lord had not been on our side, when people attacked us, when they were almost swallowing us alive, <laughs> you have seen when their anger is flaring against us, sometimes it is the flood, and the flood is about to engulf us, and the torrent is sweeping over us, and the waters are raging. Gabanange. <laughs> But we praise the Lord who has not let us be torn by their teeth. We have escaped. Have you? <laughs> yes, many on several occasions. Sometimes it's like we are going to die. But we have escaped like a bird from the fowler's snare. The snare has been broken. We have escaped. Our help is in the name of the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. I'm Kole Debirunji Nayimba. God has done mighty things in my life and so I rejoice. We rejoice together. I'm Kole Debirunji Nayimba. I'm Kole Debirunji Nayimba.
It's only Jesus. Amazing, it's only Jesus. We give him all the glory and honor. All the glory and honor belongs to Jesus. Indeed. Aren't we blessed? Mm. Yes, we are gathering in his presence, enjoying his presence day by day. It's amazing. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord. My name is Michael Kadu, and there are so many things about me, and I'll tell you that story today, and I hope you will enjoy the story, but more importantly, I hope that it would show you God's faithfulness to us. Even when the winds rage, when the storms rage, God is there, and I'm not here alone. And my name is Vicky, Vicky Kadu. I acquired that name almost 28 years ago. Oh, wow. And the Lord has been faithful to mm. us. Mm. To acquired name syndrome. This end. <laughs> <laughs> the Kadu name. <laughs> yes. So it's been a long journey. What I know about myself is that the Lord saved me. And it's not just saving me physically, but he really saved me. I am not the perfect model of a human being, but the Lord saved me. And he keeps on saving me on a daily. The story that really touches my heart that I want to share with you, a testimony today, we want to share with you, is something that maybe some of our viewers, but all of you know. It's the story of when I was attacked, driving into home in 2008 and that was a very very sad situation in our lives I drove out from work and then I got home and I was driving into the gate I didn't see much the gate opened and then I got onto the drive and when I got onto the drive I saw people and I thought they're visitors leaving as is our usual custom why should I miss these visitors when they're leaving so I said, oh, to myself, let me get out and greet them before they go. When I got out of the car, I realized there were men who were masked. And they had a gun and they had machetes. And I think they had sticks. But I don't remember very well because it was in the dark. And so all of a sudden I got frightened. But they didn't even give me time to do anything. They started hitting at me, hacking. And I heard my eye sort of caught our son's scooter, the one like leg scooter, I don't know how to call it. And it was right there on the drive, and the garage had been opened. And so I held it, I got, off, I got hold of it, and swung it very hard to the guy who was cocking the gun to shoot. I hit very hard, and because I'm alive, I can tell you, later on, I'm told, and somebody in this particular room who is right here told me that one of the police exhibits they found on the drive was a broken part, the trick of a gun. But I swung hard and hit, and then one blow came on my head, 
and just took me out. The children are very little at that time. We are in the house, we are frightened. We hear commotion outside. We know daddy's home, they know daddy's home. The custom is to open the door for him and receive him. But then it is different, it's a dark night. There is sound, there is noise. They are frightened, they are hiding under me, they are not asleep because it wasn't very late in the night. I knew and I heard that in times of trouble, we call upon the name of the Lord. He is the one who delivers us. He delivers us, brethren. We called unto the name of the Lord. Which name do you call in the times of trouble? Some of us call mama. <laughs> or you call your husband. Or even your favorite something. The Bible says, call upon the name of the Lord and he will save you. He will actually physically save you. We called upon the name of the Lord because there was trouble outside. There was no hope. We heard the commotion. We heard the cries. And then I heard uh, Michael say, you have killed me. I heard that very loud and clear. And you can imagine when you are here, we are in little children, and have they heard that as well? Mm. It was a dark moment. Mm. And yes, it is true. We went out, and he had totally passed out. Mm. He had totally passed out. He didn't know what was happening, where he was, and was, when all we could see at that moment was blood and blood. Mm. But within no time, we got our neighbors come to our rescue. Mm. And all they did is bring more towels and whatever can stop the blood. Because I understand blood, the head um, bleeds a lot. Mm. But we continued to call upon the name of the Lord and believe that he will do what we know mm. he does and now here is the great jesus story we want to tell in this so because i'm alive today i'm able to tell this story how because then i'm told what happened so apparently a neighbor who was driving behind me went in to their compound the gate locked and then he had noise coming from our side and he had just been driving after me and then his wife told him, hey, hey, it looks like they've attacked Michael. There was building still going on. And my neighbor tells me because he lived in a certain country where there are lots of robberies. They knew how to do things. So he just got the bricks they were using to build and started throwing them over the fence, mm. throwing them onto our drive, mm. trying to hit these guys. Mm. And that is actually how the Lord had arranged help and so they run off they run off and the rest of the story is what i'm told happened i'm told that i was then taken to hospital but one song was playing in that car it was a brand new car i just acquired it at that time and i had put on the song bear and Ange. that song bear and Ange. i'm told that because the engine was still running the people who came to the rescue found the song playing because they had put it on repeat. Mm. And it was saying, Bera Nange. So we saw the Lord in Bera Nange, be with me, abide with me. Okay, stay with me, keep me, Lord, in whatever situation I'm in. And so that is the first story of Jesus at that point very, very clearly. The help that came and what song was on, if the Lord wasn't on our side, if the Lord wasn't on our side and the enemies had attacked, what would have happened? And so as we go on, I'm told, we're taken to hospital. Now, this is the other great story. Every morning, I used to take a young intern, medical intern. I would find him at Cardiac Hospital and I take him when he's finished doing his duty. 
And this young intern, so we talk every morning, I gave him a lift as I'm going to work. Mm -hmm. And guess what? That night, I'm taken into cardiac hospital, and he's on duty. Later on, he tells me he wanted to cry. And he started working on my head. The eye had gone. And he said, you know what? He tells me later on, he prayed to God and said, Michael can't die on my operating table. Mm. So long way before, I had been, look, I had been walking and, and with my angel. Mm. I'm taking him along, but the Lord had planted an angel in my life, already knowing what's going to happen. And so later on, we get to a point where so many things happen. I know that we want to share so much, but let me make it even much better for you. Mm -hmm. I'm taken to Mengo Hospital mm -hmm. from Cardiff, and they say that this guy won't survive. Mm -hmm. What do we do? But now you're seeing me alive, testifying mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. now that yes. I'm alive. Yes. So you already know the God story. We're just yeah. telling you his faithfulness. Mm -hmm. Now, one of the things that I want to share with you, and if you're watching right now, is that God can bring heaven and earth down yes. if he wants to save your life. Yes. And that's what he's done. Or if he wants to do something in your life. Mm -hmm. For instance, in my case, this is what I saw. I'm told that in hospital, when we gathered, when, when everybody gathered in hospital, mm -hmm. and there were so many visitors, I'm told that somebody came into the hospital and had heard this news. And he lives in South Africa. And he's a member of this group. And he heard that I had been attacked. But at that time, he was living in South Africa, and he's a doctor. The Lord brought him. At the same time, because my eye had already gone, that part had gone, they had tried to keep the rest, keeping me alive. I'm told my brother-in-law came with a doctor friend who was visiting mm. him from South Africa, who was also an ophthalmologist. Mm. And I'm told that my employer at the time walked into the corridor at the same time. Mm. And they didn't know what to do. They just looked at the situation. And so those doctors and the one in South Africa says, this is a trauma case. Mm. He won't survive in this country. Let's take him out mm. of Uganda. And how could you take a sick a man dying out of Uganda? Mm -hmm. So heaven and earth again came because the Lord was directing. He brought the doctors, the right doctors who could actually make sure that I am transferred. Mm. Isn't that amazing? Yes. They wrote the letters. Another friend went into office. And then a great story of a miracle happened. Mm -hmm. At that particular time, mm -hmm. and I'll say it as it is, God bless him. The prime minister of the country at that time walked in mm. because he was a family friend and had heard. And the prime minister started the works mm. to make sure that a visa was issued quickly. And my passport found, mm. and I was airlifted mm. the next day. We want to tell you more about this. Not so, yeah. but I think we have to sing a bit. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. <laughs> okay. Yes, it is God's love. Pursues us. Yes. It follows us. Yes. He yes. plants his angels yes. everywhere. Mm. It is not an accident. It is not a coincidence. Mm. It is God ordering mm. his angels mm. to watch over us, beloved. Mm. He's watching over us, beloved, mm. because he loves us mm. and he wants the best for us. Mm. He wants us to use what we have for his glory. It is not, we are not alive because of what we are, but we are alive because God's name is to be praised. Amen. For his name's sake, mm. your enemy won't drown you. Mm -mm. For his name's sake, he will keep you alive mm. in whatever situation mm. you are going through. Mm. So this song, Amina, mm. is about God's love mm. to us. Mm. It compels us. It's in a language. Uh -huh. 
<laughs> from Nga Karimajong who attempt to sing it. Nga, Nga Karimajong. We, we are, what did you say, Peter? Nga, Nga Karimajong. Nga, and that one, okay? So may you be blessed, our viewers. continue in this love even as we go for the short break God is love he is able to draw us out of the pit and put us to the level where he wants us to be Amina God's love Amen, Amen. Welcome to 
being part of the AYF family and AYF testimony. And with me, I have Michael and Vicky Dakadus, who have been in AYF for so many years. When I joined, I looked at them as my elders, my mentors, my leaders, and up today. And it's such a rare opportunity to have them in this environment, just by the jackfruit tree. Mm. I know Michael loves fruits quite a lot. <laughs> Being, fruitful. Oh, we, we. <laughs> Being fruitful. I'm just going to ask a few questions and just to share with our lovely community, lovely audience. Mm -hmm. Just uh, what's your story joining AYF? How did you come to meet and join AYF? <laughs> AYF, I've always loved to serve God because I come from a Christian background where my mother and especially my father was a minister of the church. Mm. And from when we were little, we were, we, we were, uh, they bought um, hymn books for us and we, we, told, we were told to sing a soul for notes. Mm. And in our older time at home, we would sing and worship God. Mm. When we grew a little older, we were taken to church and we are members of the choir. Mm -hmm. So out of that, I developed a passion to sing, but not to sing anything, but to sing praises to God. Mm -hmm. The opportunity came in 1987 and 88 when I finished high school, mm -hmm. and there was an, an important person in my life, because I think that is the beginning of ministry yes. and my uh, firm walk with Christ and my journey for ministry and telling the young people about Christ. Mm -hmm. And his, his ministry resonated with mine. Um, through music, through testimony. I was invited to join AYF and under, under the leadership of Uncle Ben. Now, you know, everybody knows Uncle Ben. Yes, yes, yes. And I, I was given a part. I was a soprano singer, by the way. Oh, really? Yes, and because we're oversubscribed and because I'd been learning different parts when I was growing up, I was, you know, asked to do the auto. And I loved it. I loved it. That is how I joined the ministry. Oh, that is to because... serve. God. That is Vicky's story, yes. how she joined, and the purpose of serving God. Michael, what's your take? Well, I joined the Anglican New Fellowship Choir at an interesting time in my life. I committed my life to Christ in March 1987. We had just finished our senior six exams. And then, long back started. So I said, what am I going to do in this time? But I was very energetic and I prayed, God, teach me these things about you. Because I had seen the Christians in contact at school where I was and they used to me, but I really didn't know what to do. So I went at that time to Kampala Pentecostal Church, as it was called. Today it's called Watoto. And I said, let me go there for the fellowship and see how it happens. So I was at the steps. And then a young, not well, a lady met me. And that was Vicky Kavalika Gua. <laughs> Vicky Kavalika Gua met me there. And so she said, Oh, hello, how are you? Um, oh, what's your name? And say, Michael Cuddy. Then she said, Oh, my brother was talking about you, you're a keyboard player. And I said, Yes, I am. And she said, They said you got saved. And I said, Yes, I did. And she said, Now you know. There's something very special that I want to introduce to you. So she took me aside as I was actually going into Pastor Gary's office and she started telling me about a wife and said, there's this great opportunity. And remember, I had asked God to help me get a fellowship that would nurture me. Mm. So I was told when the meeting time was and I went, attended the meeting. And since then, a wife has been my fellowship. And that's how I joined the rest is history. So I've literally grown as a Christian in AYF. And wow. whether it is my falling or walking and everything, AYF has been surrounding me with love. Wow. Welcome back from the break. The Kadus were telling us their story. And we all know and we have seen that God stations his people in different places. I don't know whether you have seen him stationing his people just to make sure you land on a safe place, you know? And I, I thank God, I, it's very interesting and it's very encouraging. We are going to continue to listen to this story 
because we know salvation belongs to our God. And we the redeemed shall be strong. And we the redeemed shall be strong. part of the story yes, yes. well uh -huh. it's amazing because there are a number of things that happened we shared that we were airlifted to South Africa but remember I wasn't that conscious to know what was happening and lots of things happened before in the hospital before we were airlifted because I wasn't conscious enough maybe you should share what happened if you see how Michael looks now, his head was <laughs> n times bigger because of the beating he had suffered. He was all bandaged up. I couldn't see the eye. I attempted to look at the eye. I was taken out and counseled that, you know, he may never be able to do to see again. He may even at that time they hadn't known whether it's one eye or two. But they said, definitely, he'll never be able to see again. We don't know whether he'll, be, he'll make use of his uh, right hand side again, especially from here up to you know, the West West, because he was totally, totally battered, mm -hmm. totally battered. So he was all bandaged up, and all you could see was white on the hospital bed. Mm -hmm. But I remember our mother, Mrs. Joyce Kadu, may she rest in peace, mm -hmm. planted a chair by the door because there were no visitors allowed mm. in the room. I don't remember her eating anything mm. or taking anything. Mm. I know because she was a praying woman. Mm. She was praying for her son. Mm. Vicky was busy crying and wailing because I, I thought, you know, I mean, what's this? Mm. But God planted people to minister mm. prayers of healing mm. to Michael. And because he does that, his Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. you know, kind of drops something in you. Mm -hmm. One morning, we are there, and I'm like, mm -hmm. there is something dropping from, from uh, when Dr. Uh, Dr. Friend, who is Dr. Andrew Mujogira came, mm -hmm. says, how is Michael? He says, something is dripping from his nose. Mm -hmm. I think he's got an, gotten a flu. Mm -hmm. And I saw Andrew immediately change. <laughs> And he says, no, that's not good news. That can be a flu. Mm -hmm. Those are fluids mm -hmm. from the brain. Mm -hmm. We don't want to lose Michael. Mm -hmm. We must take him out. Mm -hmm. And that was the cause of emergency. Mm -hmm. 
because that meant if those fluids, I'm not a medical doctor, so I don't want to speak about that because people here may be, you know. Yeah, yes, I've been, I've been told that those fluids around the brain and cushion it, and when they drip out, the person dies. And yes. that's, that's how, what most border border victims die of because it just busts that place. And once they see that fluid coming out of the nose, mm -hmm. they just know that the person is gone. So that is where mm. you were. we were. Mm. Actually, several years after when we had an AYF celebration and that doctor mm. met me mm. and I was trying to, every time we meet, we say, praise God. Mm -hmm. He said, there's something I didn't tell you. Mm. He told me, Vicky, I had lost Michael mm. at the, in the theater. Mm. I cried to God. I had lost him. Mm. Michael spent from 10 o'clock when he was attacked. He was released from theater at 5. Mm. Doctor was praying. Mm. He needed Michael to come back. Mm. So the second time he's going was that when he started leaking the fluids. Mm. But again, Dr. Um, God mm. had brought a doctor to identify mm. that that was dangerous. Mm. At that moment, mm. people, are you hearing? Mm. Yes. And then, mm. yes. yes. And then, because it's not an accident, it's, an, it's not a coincidence, mm -hmm. God orders mm. people. Mm. And then, because he was working with an organization, all they needed from that trauma center mm -hmm. was a guarantee. Mm -hmm. uh, they didn't even want money. They wanted a guarantee, a bank guarantee, mm -hmm. that they would take care of this patient. Mm -hmm. And because he was working in a banking institution, mm -hmm. the bank automatically gave a guarantee, which mm -hmm. enabled us to fly Michael out mm -hmm. immediately. Mm -hmm. He ordered everything together. Mm -hmm. Now. That, that is the real God story for mm -hmm. me. Mm -hmm. When you don't have money, mm -hmm. and all of you know, you've seen how many times you have to raise money for people to go yeah. mm -hmm. to different places mm -hmm. for operations. Mm -hmm. We have a number of people who you see in the newspapers. Mm -hmm. Guess what mm -hmm. happened to me? A one email liner. Mm -hmm came from London mm. and say, do everything to save Michael's life. Mm. That's what I call a blank check. Amen. The Lord gave a blank check. Amen. And so when I was flown out there, the hospital said, no problem. Mm -hmm. For me, the biggest story is how God can use everything. Mm. Now, I always remember that verse, mm. in the beginning mm. was the word. In the beginning was the word. Mm. And the word was with God. Mm -hmm. yes, the word was God. God. Mm. And then God said, let there be. It was the word. Mm. So brethren, I got a blank check mm -hmm. by the word. Mm -hmm. So being flown out of the country, there's no cash mm. that crossed people's hands mm. for me to get anywhere. Mm. It was just the word. A word was spoken, airline tickets appeared. Mm. A word was spoken, mm. and everything happened. Mm. I got into hospital, into South Africa. Mm. I'm told, remember I'm telling you, I'm just telling you what I was told. Yeah. Because mm. I, I, did, I, I wasn't conscious of all of this. Mm -hmm. And so the hospital, which Vicky talked about, Mill Park Hospital in South Africa, great trauma center, mm -hmm. Amazing place. Actually, my friends were teasing me and saying, oh, you're in the hospital where President Mandela is treated. Mm -hmm. That is also amazing, to get the best trauma center mm -hmm. in the South. But what they Michael, did, yes. let me interrupt a little bit. Has God put you somewhere to be the rescue team? Some of us are in the Ministry of Education for that purpose. Some of us are in hospitals for that purpose. Others are in uh, a judiciary for that purpose. Sometimes some of us are in churches for that purpose. Where has God put you? And are you doing what he said he wants you to do? Because you are, you, are, you are on the rescue team for somebody. You see, Michael is saying, Michael and Vicky, they are saying that even Cash did not uh, 
Sibitege Debio na. It did not move because for me, I'm not a banker. But, you know, things did not, uh, we, there wasn't, uh, they called it Kavuyo in my language. And But there's also yeah. ministry yeah. of presence. Yes. So, there is ministry of presence and uh -huh. there is ministry of prayer. Uh -huh. so it doesn't matter yes. what you're doing. So mm. that's the story that yes. I'm telling. Mm -hmm. that in the beginning was the word and by the word. So again on that enabling part, the word went that, but Michael has group personal accident cover. And the group personal accident cover was actually in A in South Africa. The group accident cover was with AIG South Africa. And so, Again, people in the HR team just spoke the word, as we said. And then everything was transferred. And AIG South Africa said, this is a clear case of group accident cover. Transfer all the details to us. No money was paid. It was the word. Now, there is the bigger side to it. Then finally I'm stabilized because they couldn't operate until I'm stabilized. That's when now I become aware of what was happening. And I'm seeing through this eye, and it couldn't see well, which was remaining. So they now tell me, Michael, we have now done everything that we could do to stabilize you in intensive care. We now feel you're at a level where you can be operated on. So the processes start. MRI and all of those things they do to you. And we discovered the X-ray systems in Uganda couldn't do the 3D things at that time. And so the doctors told me how all half of my skull had been crushed. And then the doctors told me clearly it's crushed. They showed me the pictures because I could see at the point with this one eye and it was all a mix. And if you saw the images with all the fractures, a fractured skull from the head going down, we still bear the scars of that. Actually, some people were asking, is this person alive? Mm -hmm. Just by one fracture or two, and with the seepage from the brain, the person is gone. More than seven fractures of the skull with the entire side collapsed, you know, I, I just said, you know, the, you, sometimes you find people when this entire side is battered and fallen down, that is what I was seeing. Mm. And I'm like, okay, God, I married a very handsome man. Mm. <laughs> what are you telling us? So they told me what they're going to do. They said, first and foremost, we're going to reconstruct you. So... If you could look inside me, I'm like a welded person inside, on this side. So they reconstructed the skull part with titanium. And so it's all like welded together. You know when you go to the welders and see those things? So actually, that's what, that's what I look like inside. Somebody told me I'm a bionic man. That's what the doctor said. And then they recreated the skull, the skull all of this side then the jaws, the right side. And then they told me, when we finish that, we need to give it about two weeks to stabilize and settle. And then after that, if it has settled, then we're now going to recreate your eye. But your eye is gone, so you won't have an eye. So I'm, I'm, I'm one-eyed, that's the truth. <laughs> but I'm made, it's, made, it's been made possible. The Lord has made it possible for me to have the look of two eyes, but I am actually one-eyed. So when that happened, then they, after that, in between so many other things, then they put a silicone eyeball, and then after that, healing, and then they had to reconstruct a number of parts inside there, and then sort out the head and things like that, and a few other things which I won't mention. <laughs> one, 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 one of the specialists, because we saw more than five specialists, when the attack meant that he had to go through a maxi, maxi, 
maxillofacial, the maxillofacial surgeon. A surgeon. Mm. We became friends actually because he would leave theater even when he not, was not operating on Michael, put his cup down, just sit by his side and tell me, Michael, tell me well, how was your day? He later told us that there was something Michael had. There was that will to live. But I know that it was God. It was Jesus in him who made him shine even in the midst of the situation. And so that verse, if the Lord had not been on our side. But then the other one that was really on me was even though you walk through the valley of the shadow of death. That one, fear no evil. And I kept singing all of these psalms Ian White had put in my mind. Now, this amazed me. The Lord was fair. So at the end of the day, the Lord just amazed me because when it came to bills, because men think about bills a lot, you know, I was worried about the bills as I'm still there and they haven't finished the work. And then uh, word came to me that the insurance company had said, because of the nature of the accident, it is fully covered. It is fully covered. So all the treatment was covered. So I guess that also helped me. But I'm saying the Lord, you know when you go for a job, you're very excited, you've got a job, sign here, sign there, sign here. And you just sign quickly, you know, like you download apps and don't read the fine print. <laughs> Yet there are many implications. Sign here, sign here. I even never asked, do I have insurance? I never asked. But the Lord knew that at that time, I needed that because that's what was going to happen. So I see the Lord being very good to me. And at the end of the day, they finally put the prosthetic eye when everything has healed. And then I'm in and out of hospital again. And I just thank God. Because when I look at my life today, and many times I think I'm a wretched sinner. Many times I've fallen short from the Lord, of, uh, short, short of the Lord's requirements of me. But as a wretched sinner, God doesn't give up on me. He doesn't give up on me. He's still being around even in that valley of the shadow of death. And God still heals. He still delivers. Michael lost his sense of taste and his sense of smell because he was hit inside out. He couldn't smell, he couldn't taste, he couldn't see. The first time he went out, he saw darkness. So bit, little by little, God has been restoring him to himself, not to anybody else, but to himself. He's restored his eye, he dries me in the dark. He restored to a greater extent his taste and his smell. He's restored him to himself just for his glory. That's why we thank him. And so that's what God has done. A wretched sinner. He's just saved me and he continues to save me. Lord, you came down. On the cross Just for me A wretched sinner Short of your glory I thank you Lord For loving me I thank you, Lord, for your love for me. I thank you, Lord, for loving me. You are my God. Lord, you did it.
just to give me oh, life in abundance, the joy of salvation. I thank you, Lord, for loving me. I thank you, Lord. Oh, yes, Lord. is our God. Amen. There are many people who say, oh, wow, for me, do they love me? God loves you. You have a different miracle. You have different experiences. God loves you. And I want all of us, even as we get off, the, the, get off air, keep thanking God. Thank him for the things he has given you. Thank him for life. Thank him for salvation. Thank you for the fact that you are still here. You are watching. You have data. You have electricity. You have a television. You have very many things. Just thank God. We worship you and bless you. In the name of Jesus, we have prayed. Amen. 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 Oh, thank you. Amen. Amen. Thank you for joining us in this episode of AYF in Worship. We look forward to another time of fellowship, another time of worship, even as we continue thanking God. God bless you. Amen. 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 If the Lord was not on our side, oh. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Trouble, trouble. Mm. <laughs>